Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, we are going to discuss about uh, operators in Python. So what exactly is an operator? Operator is used to perform arithmetic or logical calculation or operations on different variables or their values in a Python program. So in Python, we have different types of operators starting from arithmetic operators, assignment operators, comparison operators, identity operators, logical operators, membership operators and so on. We also have another type of operator called as bitwise operator but since these are not used in our day to day programming life we are not going to discuss this in this current video. So let's get started and discuss the arithmetic operator which is the first operator in our list. Let's start with few examples of arithmetic operators. To begin with we will see an example of addition and I will uncomment this code here which is assignment so I'm assigning the variable a with the value of 10 and then followed by variable b with the value of 20 and then finally I'm trying to print a plus b let's see what the output is so you can see that the output shows 30 which means a and b are arithmetically added together and the sum is 30 which gets printed to our console let's check the second example in the arithmetic operators which is subtraction. In this particular example, I'm trying to subtract A from B. As you know, the value of A is 10 and the value of B is 20. So if we subtract A from B, the answer should be 10, right? So if I try to execute this program, you can see that the console shows 10, which is as expected. Similarly, we can also see that the multiplication is a star. So b star a means b is multiplied with a and we are trying to print the output and if i execute this program you can see the value is 200 because the value of b is 20 and the value of a is 10 so 20 multiplied by 10 should give us 200 the next thing is division so here you can see that b slash a which means b is divided by a and the resultant value is printed to our console Let's see what our console has to show us. So you can see that the value is 2.0 which means uh, the value of B was 20 and the value of A is 10 and when we divide them the answer is 2.0. So you can notice that the value has a decimal which means that if you use the normal division like this it always gives you the result in float value. The next thing is the modulus operator so here you can see that I am trying to do a percentage sign in between the B and the A variable and let's look into the output. So you can see that the output shows 0. Why 0? Because uh, the value of B is 20 and the value of A is 10. So if I divide B with A that means 20 divided by 10 then the answer is 2 right and is there any remainder? No. So since there is no remainder, that means the modulus operator will always return zero in this case. In short, a modulus operator actually gives you the remainder of the division between two numbers. So if there is no remainder, then it will give you zero. So the next example is the exponential operator. So in this example, you can see that uh, the variable b has a value of 20 and then I'm trying to square it. So in order to perform the square operation, I put two stars here and I could also do something like three, which is the cube of B and I can also make it four and it can be any integer value that I want to put here. So we will just do it as two and we can see the output. You can see that the output shows 400, which means 20 multiplied by 20, which is 400. Okay, or you can also say that 20 raised to power 2 or the square of 20, all of these will return a result of 400. The next item is the floor division. So here you can see that the value of B is 20 as you already know. And then we are putting two slashes and followed by the integer value 3. So what happens if I try to execute this particular program? You can see that the output shows 6. How we arrived at this value? Let's see. So B has a value of 20 and we are trying to floor divide it by 3. So if you do the normal division, then we can divide an integer 20 by 3 and the result will be 6 and you will also have some remainder, right? 
So in case of floor division, it does not consider the remainder, but it just gives you the actual divided value. So the next thing that we are going to discuss about is the assignment operators. You must be already aware of the simplest assignment operator that we use, which is the equal to symbol. So if I try to do a print of A, you can see that the value of 10 gets printed and the assignment operator here is the equal to sign which actually assigns the value of 10 to our variable a so other than this simplest form of assignment operator we also have several other formats consider the example where we want to increment the value of a by say 50 so we usually do like this where a is assigned the value of a plus 50 right and then we can also print the value of a which is the updated value and if I comment this print statement out and execute this program, then you can see that the value gets printed as 60, which is as expected. But we could also rewrite this particular line as a plus equals to 50. Okay, so what I have done here is I have just removed the redundant a here and instead moved the plus symbol from the right hand side to the left hand side. So the resultant program looks like this wherein we have a followed by plus and equal to sign and then the value that we want to add to it. I will comment this and if I execute this program then you can see that the value is 60 which is as expected. Okay so instead of the plus value here I can also do a minus and if I execute this again you can see that the value is minus 40. This is because uh, this particular statement here is doing uh, a is equal to a minus 50 okay so the value of a was already 10 and if we do a minus 50 then the value will be obviously minus 40 yeah so similarly I can also do a multiplication here or a division or a flow division so let's see what happens if I try to do a flow division here which is basically a flow divide by 50 and if I execute this, you can see that the value of zero, uh, this is because the flow division gives you the value of only the quotient and not the remainder. And if I divide 10 by 50, then there is no quotient. So it's in decimals. So it uh, returns you zero, right? So that's all for the assignment operators. Let's jump into the next example. So let's see an example of comparison operators now. As seen in our previous examples, we take the same variables a and b, a with the value of 10 and b with the value of 20. I'm trying to print a simple comparison here where I'm trying to compare the value of a and b uh, with a greater than symbol. So this will print true if a is greater than b and it may print false if a is less than b. So let's try to execute this program and see what happens in the console output. So you can see that the console says it's a false which means a is not greater than b and that is true because 10 is not greater than 20. So this is the simplest form of comparison operator that we could see in python. So similar to the greater than example I can also make it a less than symbol here and if I execute this you can see that the value now changes to true which means the value of a is now less than b which is true right and the third comparison operator that we will discuss is the double equal sign this basically checks for the equality that means if a is equal to b then it prints true let's see what happens so currently it prints false because a is less than b so this is as expected then the next example is the not equal to which means it prints true if a is not equal to b let's see what happens here so you can see that the value is true which means a is not equal to b and since 10 is not equal to 20 this is as expected again then we have the less than or equal to comparison operator which means if a is less than or equal to b then it should print true so in our example a is less than b so it's printing true and if i make a as 20 then again it should print true so this is as expected the next operator is the greater than or equal to symbol so here if a is greater than or equal to b it should print true and as you know a and b both are same here so it's printing true and if i make a as 30 and print it it will again print true because a is greater than b and if i make b greater than a then we expect a false and this is what we see in the console output 
So we have covered the comparison operator now and let's jump into the next example. So the next example that we are going to cover is the logical operators. So we take the similar example where we have two variables a and b. So this time a is having a value of 30 and b is having a value of 60. And in this print statement I am trying to print if a is greater than b and a is less than 100. So the statement here and is basically a reserved keyword and it also means a logical operator. So what we are trying to do here is we are trying to check for first condition here which is a is greater than b then we are trying to do a second condition here which is a is less than 100 and these two conditions are combined together using a logical and. So let's execute this program and see the output. So you can see that the output says false which means these conditions when logically ended together the value result in false. So let's look into this example. So we had A as 30 and B as 60. So this thing fails because A is not greater than B. And as you know in an AND operator if the first condition fails then it does not look into the second condition and hence the whole statement fails. And since the statement fails it prints out false. Let's see the second example. So in this example we will use a logical OR operator. So similar to the first example we have a first condition here which checks for A is less than 100 and the second condition checks whether A is less than 0. As we know that the first condition is true because the value of A is 30 and 30 is less than 100. And the second condition is false because A is 30 and 30 is not less than 0. But since the operator between these two conditions is a OR, you already know that in a OR operator, the first item is evaluated or the first statement is evaluated and if it is true, it does not check for the second statement. So since A is less than 100 and it returns true, it does not go to the second statement or the second condition. So the result here will be always or true. So let's execute this and you can see that the output shows true which is as expected. Let's jump into the third example which is basically a NOT operator. As you know the NOT is basically the negation of the result from here. So in this particular statement we are trying to check whether the value of A is less than 0 and if this is less than 0 it returns true. But in our example the value of A is 30 which is greater than 0 and hence it will return us a false and since we are doing a negation here which means the negation of false which is a true it should print true for us. Let's execute this program and see what happens. So you can see that the output prints true which is as expected again. Now let's jump into our next example which is the membership operators. So here I am taking an example of variable a with a list value inside it. So the list is basically comprising of four integers which is 10, 20, 30 and 40. And here you can see that I am trying to print something. So what I have written inside the print statement is 10 in A which basically means I am trying to check if the value 10 is present in the variable A. And if I try to execute this you can see that the result is true which means the value of 10 is present in the list variable a. Similarly, we can also see that uh, what happens if I try to find 100 in the list variable a. So since we know that 100 is not present in a, we expect a answer of false. Let's execute this and see what happens. So when I execute this program, you can see that the value is false, which means 100 is not present in our list A. So in the third example we are trying to see if 100 is not present in A which means it should print true if 100 is not present in our list variable A and which is as expected. So if I try to execute this program you can see that the true value is printed as expected because 100 is obviously not in our list of 10, 20, 30 and 40. So now let's jump into today's homework. So today you have to write two programs. One is to write a program to check if your name has the character A in it and print the result. So the result should be my name has A in it or it can also be my name doesn't have A in it. So depending on whether your name has a A character in it or not. Okay, for example, in my name, there is a A in the beginning, that's Anoop. So uh, I will be printing an output called my name has A in it. 
okay i think that's clear to you now uh, for the second homework you have to write another program that finds the square of all the numbers starting from 1 till 10 and print them one by one on each row okay so there is a small hint for you that you may want to use the for loop here if you do not remember how to write a for loop in python you can watch my other video where i explained how to write for loop in python so these are the two homeworks that you have to do today i think that's all for today's video if you like this video so far then please share it with your friends and also click the like button if you have not subscribed to this channel you can click the subscribe and the bell icon so that you get notified once i upload my next video on python tutorial for beginners thanks for watching this video thanks for your time take care bye